To the beat, coming at you with the funny random rambling, talking about all the things that'll make that rain day sunny. Yeah, it's hot and popping, fireball dropping. Come get your laugh on, yeah, it's a concept. You know, he be rocking, rock and the facts and all of the gossip. It don't matter where you are or who you with, you gotta tune right in. Bring your girl into your girl to bring your friends, be Robbie Lid. Tune in in your crib, in your way, back to job. He got new shows every Sunday. What up, everybody? This is your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Realms with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first-time listener, I'd like to thank you all so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody recommended you to me, uh, go ahead and take your social media app of choice and uh, craft them a well-thought-out DM telling them thank you for recommending you to me. Speaking of social media, you can find the Random Rambles with Rob on various social media platforms to include Twitter at 3R Show, Instagram at the 3R Show, who I have a fucking issue with because they get that damn app update and I'm doing videos, creating motherfucking content and shit, and they don't show nothing. All it is is audio. The screen was black and it <laughs> fucking pissed me off. But anyway, Instagram at the 3R Show, Twitch. For uh, twitch.tv for slash 3R show, uh, YouTube 3R show. And for anything that I may have forgotten to mention, you can go to randomrob.com. It's all there in one place. Now, got a guess. Y'all know that. This is how I do. And I usually give a little backstory on how I come to find out about these people and try to solicit them to be on the podcast. So, 2018, I was at Bar Bohemi somewhere downtown in Houston, Texas. And we did this uh, thing that I may have talked about on the podcast. It was right around uh, maybe Comic Palooza or something like that, or sometime after. We put together this thing with a whole bunch of local Houston podcasts. It's called the H-Town Pod Fest. So the two times that we did it in 2018, 2019, we both did it at Bar Bohemi. But anyway, first time we did it, Bar Bohemi, I met these uh, three ladies from a podcast called the Soul Filling Podcast. Uh, I'm nice looking young ladies or whatever. And I can say that because I'm an older married gentleman and I have to describe each young lady as a nice young lady. So talk with them, gave them some buttons and stickers and other memorabilia from my show. I tried to get them on here a while back, but you know, they doing things and stuff, but following them on social media and they were at a live show at this live show was the man sitting across from me virtually. And I heard him sing, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And I didn't mean that in a discouraging way. I was like, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't hearing nothing like this on the regular, because it's more likely uh, some other bullshit like that. So I was like, whoa, breath of fucking fresh air. So I f- scrolled down to the comments, found his name, hit the follow button. Been following him ever since, just seeing the journey that is him. And a uh, lot, of, lot of ups and downs in there. Uh, Instagram page full of pictures that went away, that came back, and all kinds of other crazy shit. But the one thing out of the whole journey was the music. And that's what brought me in, and that's what got me to reach out. So joining me virtually, local artists from here in Houston, Texas, Inde, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing today? Hanging in there. Thank you for having me, first of all. Yeah, sure. man. I mean, I appreciate you giving me uh, you giving me your time or whatever, because, I mean, you're a creative young man. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been peeking at you through the window of social media and seeing you do all kinds of, you know, amazing things. And it's just for you to take time away from that to be here with me while I drink wine out of a cup is great. <laughs> well, I'm drinking Parmesan, so we in the same boat. Look. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> but um we was talking a little bit before we got on to recording properly and everything mm-hmm. you're talking about how you like to sit low and lean sideways and all kind of shit like that that very indicative of a houstonian but when i first uh, laid eyes on you and just um seen how you carry yourself as far as um your musical abilities and things like that i did not think you were from here mm-hmm. so i mean are you from here originally or are your people from here what, what's going on 
I was born in Austin. Okay. I moved to Houston when I was five. So I grew up in this area. Um, my mom is from off a of homestead. My grandma still lives off a of homestead. Um, I'm technically not from Houston at all in any yeah. sense of the word. Because even when I moved to the Houston area, I was I grew up in Katy. Yeah. So really, I'm technically not from Houston. But like <laughs> the culture that I grew up around and being with, with like my cousins and my grandma and stuff like that is Houston. So like that'll always be my heart and that's where i lend everything to is houston so that's okay. just the person i am word and i i, I get it because um i'm not natively from here as well i'm from uh louisiana so my other family's from New louisiana it makes sense because <laughs> <laughs> um moving to houston after i retired from the military i did not know how much the houston music scene influenced my childhood Mm. You know, Cause uh, I think about eighth grade, I found sc what screw was, and I was like, "Whoa, this is some otherworldly shit." I was like, "Man, your battery's dying in your damn Walkman. What's going on?" <laughs> and then I was just like listening to it, and just you know, I, I moved here, turn on the local radio station, and they played my childhood. I was like, "Whoa, hold on, Paul Wall, Slim the goddamn." Michael Watts, all the motherfuckers just, just like all on the radio. And that's another thing that I appreciated about Houston that they support their talent mm -hmm. whatnot. So some of the things that I want to roll into when I see you, and that's what I was telling you earlier, was just like the way you conduct yourself as an independent artist or whatever is not that of what I see from a lot of independent artists. So, I mean, is that something that somebody instilled in you or kind of gave you the tip of like, hey, man, fake it till you make it or whatever the case may be? I mean, what's up with that? Um, the way I move is heavily influenced by watching my mom move in her life. She's a uh, um, she owns her own business. Uh, she owns two businesses, actually. They're not anything to do with music. They're like home health. Uh, healthcare and like that but just seeing her work and take care of her business and be in charge of it and not let anybody treat her oddly yeah. in that situation uh influenced me heavily but um another way i connect myself is i try to be as true to myself as i possibly can without trying to put on a, a facade mm -hmm. if that makes sense because yeah. i feel like a lot of people even just in houston try to put on they want to be i'm a houston artist so this is what i'm doing yeah, but I'm from Houston, so I'm a Houston artist. <laughs> like I don't have to do that to yeah. be a Houston artist. I'm from. I'm here. I grew up here. Like yeah. that's who I am. Um, but I do. I, I I do agree. I care myself a little bit differently, but it it was mostly um, influenced by my mom. Just watching her take care of her business. Okay. Now, um, as far as doing your own thing, you know, just mm -hmm. carving your own path and whatnot. Um, just going back through what I can see of uh, the catalog that when I was looking up your music and whatnot, mm -hmm. I see that a lot of your older stuff from like 2017, 2018 and everything like that were under some kind of label or ownership. And then most of the, the 19 and uh, 2020 stuff is under your own name. So, I mean, how was that experience or is that just something that you decided to do on your own? It wasn't that it was under ownership. I was under a different name. Oh. I was never under somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that it makes sense that that would be like the the perceived thing. I was just, my real name is Jeremy. Yeah. Um, in middle school and high school, my nickname was Germ. So at one point I was going by Germ when I was making music. <laughs> and that music was trash. Um, but when I would distribute it, they would ask you, um, with the distro I was under, they would ask you if you wanted to distribute it under a, a label. And I made my own label and I just named it. It was like Kami's Lookout or something like that. And I yeah. put it under that. So it would be perceived that I was under somebody, but I really wasn't. <laughs> um, okay. And then I changed my name. Uh, yeah, I was, it, it, it's always been the same. It's just been me putting it out by myself, but it's just a different direction that I decided to go under. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, like, what has that experience been like from you, uh, been like for you since, you know, you started with Germ <laughs> and that um, made the transition here into Dende? 
Um, honestly, Germ was more of me trying to just make stuff and be like, hey, guys, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And then Dende was me departing from who I used to be, like as a person in general, because I feel like my music is a representation of who I am. Mm-hmm. But um, Dende is me departing from who I was as a person before and then being like my true self. Um, it's kind of liberating, I would say. Yeah. Um, it's definitely fun. <laughs> uh, but it's also sometimes it's really sad because I have to visit things that I might not want to visit in my history and memory mm-hmm. of having a right. I think it's definitely a rewarding though, um, being able to do it and do it the way I want to do it because when I make music, I kind of want people to understand who I am and understand me as a person. Okay. So it, it it's definitely rewarding when people are like, "Hey, I really appreciated this song or this lyric or something like that." So what goes into the process now, vice uh, from when you were germ trying to put stuff together and um, make this music? As of now, uh, so back then I was making stuff and I was like, I don't want to make my mom or my dad or my grandma or my family upset with anything I say. I don't want to cuss. I don't want to offend anybody. But now it's just like, I'm going to say exactly what's in my head and I'm going to tell my story exactly how it happened. And I'm going to tell my side of it. And um, like I said, it's a little bit more liberating and it's, it's definitely freeing to be able to speak your truth into the world. Because some people make music for other people, but I honestly can say I make music for myself and I put it out. And then if people like can accept it and like get something from it, then that's cool. But I really am just putting it out because it's me. Um, Yeah, it's definitely a different process because before it was just like me trying to make stuff that wasn't going to upset anyone else. And now it's just like, is it good? <laughs> like, <laughs> is it good? Then put it out. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that because I, I kind of dealt with that in the beginning of my um, my podcast and, and I was just like, uh, somebody going to hear this and then it's going to get back to the wrong person and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, fuck it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying anything that I wouldn't say to someone's face, you know? For sure. It's just like, so what's the point in trying to hide it or, you know, suppress it and whatnot? I just like, I say what the fuck I want. I say motherfucker a lot. So motherfucker <laughs> it is. <laughs> motherfucker it is. I agree. It's it's just like a. I want to be, I want my internet, my on screen and my music and my in person to be the same person. So now that transition from germ to Dende is as germ was a different entity Dende is literally who I am and all those things line up and you're getting exactly what you're going to get no matter where you see me at. Word. Word. So what made you go with Dende? Dende? I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> if people don't know, Dende is from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Ball Z. It's an anime. Um, Dende is not the strongest character in the show whatsoever he's not a fighter at all the show is all about fighting but he's not a fighter um basically he's taken and like made to watch over earth the whole premise of the show dragon ball wouldn't make any sense if he wasn't there anymore because the dragon balls wouldn't exist so nobody's like uh wishes would come true i feel like i'm not the most powerful or the most important person up front if that makes sense. Yeah. But I feel like I'm a very important person, maybe in the sideline or in the, in the background that people don't maybe know about, Mm -hmm. but I influence things and I make sure things are going. So that's kind of why I picked that name. It was half of being a nerd. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Half of it was me being a nerd. And the other half was like, I really relate with this character because I'm not the guy that's up front fighting these battles, but I'm the guy that's like influencing things and making sure it's going the right way. Word. Man, my lights is just going crazy right now. <laughs> Looking my eyeballs up. Anyway, um, you talk about you being you and that being represented on uh all your social media platforms and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What I've noticed over the past couple of months and everything that you started to expand and uh branch out and to lend that uh character that is you to uh, different uh, platforms. You've been going to different podcasts, being guests, and I appreciate you for being here as well. 
<laughs> um, you also started your own podcast, the Den Day Hour, also the All Cap Podcast. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. what, what was the inspiration behind that? Okay, so I love podcasts. Like literally at this point in my life, I still work a job and I do music. Um, at my job, I don't listen to music anymore. I listen to podcasts. And mostly what I listen to on podcasts is like comedy podcasts. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm heavily influenced by those because I think it's a free expression. And so I wanted to start a podcast with my friends. So that's how All Cap came. And All Cap was literally just us saying what we could say without getting canceled. That's Very well. <laughs> literally why that podcast exists. We just every week we try to see what can we say this week. We don't even have to believe it. Like yeah. <laughs> we can just say it. And if we get canceled, then fine. That's why we made this podcast. And then um, I decided to make Dende Hour because I wanted to make one that's actually not like serious, but it's like more content worthy mm -hmm. uh, where I talk to content creators, uh, musicians, people in entertainment and just have a conversation with them about their lives. Because me being an artist, I know I've done interviews and some people ask me the same questions. Yeah. Just like, I kind of just want to talk. Oh, like, yeah. like I like to talk. Like I, I like to talk to people. So I was like, I want to bring people that make content and just talk to them because some of them don't want to talk about their album. Some of them just want to talk. Yeah. So I just want to talk to them. So that's why I made Dende Hour. Word, word. Okay. So, <laughs> cause like um, you you bring that up about people interviewing you and asking the same questions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I I was gonna be one of those people tonight. It's okay. I don't care. I, I, I roamed around a little bit. And what mm -hmm. I did find was, um, you know, it opened my eyes to some other shit that was going down here in Houston or whatever. Mm -hmm. The sessions. So mm. I seen your performance on there and just like, what the fuck is this? Just kind of like how I found you. I was like, well, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know? And I'm looking, I was like, oh, shit, then they on here. Let me check it out. And then uh, you had the dude, I think he the CEO of uh, Zay, right? something like that Isaiah, yeah yeah so you hit me to that just kind of looking into you and some of the questions that i would have had he asked you so mm -hmm. like i know who your influences are i know what your favorite song is that you've created so mm -hmm. i mean that kind of just slide that to the side but what i will ask you from that whole experience that i've uh, found how important is programming and content like the sessions to an artist Ooh, very. I will say up there on par with putting out like your own content, like a project, because content like that is on par with like, like uh, the color studios and stuff like that. It's just stuff you can share. Like literally after I did that, I shared it to Twitter, and I don't know if you know what um the uh, what is it called? It's like R and B. I don't want to misspeak. It's a page. It's a page on Instagram and Twitter, and they do um, R and B music. R and B radar. R and B radar like ran with that video, just a snippet of me singing from that. Very well. I'm and look it up now. <laughs> got me a couple hundred thousand just views of people listening to me sing from just running with it because it's a good. It was a good platform. It looked good. It sounded great. Yes. And it was just more content. So. Um, like uh platforms like the sessions are definitely really important because it's something that you don't even have to put together yourself and it's just more content for your music because mm -hmm. i have i have visuals for take it from me which is the song i did there but that visual is way better because it was me singing it live mm -hmm. and in my opinion and other people that have listened to me this opinion me singing live is a lot better than the recorded version of the songs. <laughs> like, so that one, like it did a really good for me. Like it, it did really good. Yeah. So, I mean, I seen that and it's just being introduced to the sessions in itself or whatnot. <laughs> this one was funny, right? Cause um, I listened to your album, me and um, I don't pay attention to like too many details. I just, all right, that's his album. I press play, let it run from top to bottom. You know, I don't look at featuring whoever and whatever, right? So I look at the sessions, I see your performance. And then like a couple of posts after you was the girl, uh, Lily. I seen her mm -hmm. performance and I was like, dog, him, uh, Dende and her should get together and do a track. And then I go, I was like, wait a minute. 
Dude, yeah, Lily, <laughs> Lily is one of my like best friends. Um, Lily got me my. I used to work at a studio before the pandemic. Um, Baron Studios. Lily got me my job there. Uh, Lily's amazing. She's an amazing artist. She's an amazing singer, and we did Armor. Uh, yeah, she's dope. <laughs> I love that girl. Yeah. How did that relationship start? Um, when I was doing shows. I did a show with Bounce and Turn, and I also did that show with Tino, Uncle Tino, who's also on Armor. Mm-hmm. Uncle Tino plays uh, Talkbox on Armor, and I, I was on the lineup with Tino, and Lily came to see Tino, and uh, I just kind of linked up with Lily after that show, and that's really how that came. We just started talking to each other, and we all started becoming friends, mm-hmm. and that's really where it just came from was just seeing people perform live <laughs> like that's what it was <laughs> yeah because that, that shit yeah, like <laughs> i'm sitting there like yo no they they should really collab and do a track and shit and then i was going through the um the album list i was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's she's amazing yeah i know i that just the whole what sold me on the song that she did the seasons or whatever when she was like why you send this motherfucker my way? I was like, motherfucker, goddamn, that's the word. <laughs> Automatically liked. I went to the uh, iTunes, download automatically. <laughs> Didn't even I have remember, to hear the rest of the song. I was just sold at that point right there. <laughs> I did her. I did her album release. Like we, I performed at her album release party. Um, and I remember like it was before the album was actually out, mm-hmm. and she performed that song, and everyone in the room knew the word. And it was a packed room. <laughs> it was great. I was so happy. I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Everyone knew the words to seasons. It was crazy. So, I mean, even in akin to that or whatever, I mean, what has been that moment for you to where, like, you've had a performance out of everything that you've done or just an instance involving you in music to where, like, mm-hmm. wow, this is just amazing? Um... I would say I would say that um that voting one that moved Texas one I did but I didn't feel the energy because everyone was in a car because it was a driving concert and it was cold. <laughs> that was the best environment for a concert because the stage was crazy and the lighting was crazy and the sound was great. But the moment that I really just felt like this is awesome was before me. It was I had an album called Dark Matter that I dropped, mm-hmm. and that was before people were really even paying attention to me. And I was going to um, like open mics every week and performing songs, and I was performing at like uh, barber shops and stuff. And then I threw an album release at a clothing store because no venues would let me do a show there. And I did it at a clothing store, and like two hundred people showed up what? to my album release for for Dark Matter showed up. And not everybody could get in. And I was like, before I even performed, I was like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> like, it was it was, it was, was wild. That was a great experience for me because I was just like, oh, these people actually care. Like, I, this is, it was a validating feeling for sure. Word. So I listened to a little bit of um, Dark Matter today. Mm-hmm. And it's different from me. A lot different. Yeah. And I was just like. <laughs> This is just like it is almost kind of like got a little jazz to it and whatnot. And it is just like it kind of felt like somewhat experimental mm-hmm. and everything compared to the uh, the me uh album and whatnot. I mean, what what were you going through and what was the environment like for you when you created Dark Matter? Dark Matter honestly was me trying to make a project where I could be like, hey guys, I can do this, like this is I can make music that you can like. <laughs> like that was literally just it that was the whole premise of the album i have something for everybody it was just like y'all like it you if you don't like this type of song you like this type of song okay. and if you don't like this type of song you like this type of song and that was the whole premise of that and um going with me i was like i want to make a concept like i want it to go through my emotions and what i'm going through at the time mm-hmm. so that's the difference between those two i really I I appreciate Dark Matter because it was something that got people to pay attention to me, but it's not up to par with me for sure, <laughs> like at all. Well, it was like um, it came out from what I can remember. I mean, coincidentally, 
you know, well, not coincidentally, be because of how times were, mm-hmm. the uh, social distancing project that you did. Mm, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it was called socially distant. I'm tripping. I'm trying to yeah, remember what it's called. Distance. I said socially social distancing. Distance. That was, was like, yeah, six feet, motherfucker. It's the same Back name. <laughs> it's the same name. Um, uh, that came right after me. That was like during social. So basically that came because I was like, oh, I have nothing to do. I lost. I had two jobs at the time and I was like, I have nothing to do right now. So I need to make music mm-hmm. to kind of chronicalize what's going on in my life right now. So I made the music and uh, Austin Beatty made like a short film to it. And it was just really my emotions during the time and what was going on. Like people was, there was random ass girls trying to hit me up. Like, and that was what that, uh, um, what's that song called? Quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> Where people were trying to hit me up. I'm just like, nah, fam, you don't uh-huh. love me. You just want my attention. Um, it was, I went through a period of like depression, like, cause I was getting to a point before quarantine where it was like, oh, I might blow up now. Mm. And I was getting booked every week. And I was like, oh, I'm going. I have three South by Southwest shows. I'm going to be good. And then nothing. So I got depressed. And I was like, I'm not making any music at all. And uh, so I made, I I ended up making that. I started talking about how I couldn't do anything. And then I started talking about these people that were trying to inch their way into my life. So I made an EP just to hold people over. Like kind of like Lil Wayne and sorry for the wait. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, pretty much, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got a uh, what? It's a single out right now. I didn't get a chance to put ear to it, well, but I believe you got visuals for it called uh, was that phone telephone phone number phone, phone number? number. Yes, sir. Phone number is um, I had uh, so I made the song with uh, a producer named Billy Blunt. He's out of Austin. He's also the guitar player from my friend uh, Amira Soul. If you haven't listened to Amira Soul, you should try to get her on the show. She's from, she's out of Austin. She's an amazing performer. No. Um, um, but he's her guitarist, and he is now my new favorite producer. But um, he <laughs> sent me this beat for a uh, phone number, and I and I recorded something that I just automatically heard, and I got this artist from New Jersey. His name is uh, Chris Patrick. He just dropped a song with uh, Deontay Hitchcock. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's really dope out of Atlanta. And he's like pretty huge. He has songs with Jid and Black and stuff like that. Okay. Um, And then I got Byrie from New New York on it. Um, That song is basically about, there was people that were like trying to hop in my DMs and be like, hey, I want to help you out. Or, hey, I want to make a song. What's your phone number? (laughs) And... I'm a very strong uh, believer in energy, and I think that energy can be transferred through very, like, various mediums, and I think texts <laughs> are one of oh, them, boy. and people being able to just say whatever they want to you at any time mm-hmm. is dangerous. It's so like social media. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I, made a, so I made a song basically being like, Nah, you can't have my phone number. Like, <laughs> if I called you and I told you I need you, how long would it take to come? You can't have my phone number. Oh, like, word. like that's literally what the song is. Um, I love it because it's like an anthem. Even if you're not listening to the verses or the words I'm saying, it's still catchy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I try to do. I want to make something that's like catchy, but then if you actually listen to it, you're like, oh, okay, this is like real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, word. Now, so I mean, you you mentioned New Jersey and you know all all these various places that you're working with people with. Uh, I ain't trying to force nobody on you, but <laughs> I, I know somebody in Cali that a uh, friend of the show and whatnot. And he's looking to branch out and work with different artists. I'm just kind of uh, what's his name, Sir John Lee. That's a Sir, like Sir. How you doing, Sir? John J O N. Lee, L E E, like Bruce Lee. Hiya. Sir, can you say so, it to me? So I bring him up only because you two share the same social media acumen to where, like, he had all this shit on his Instagram, just posting all kind of crazy stuff in collaboration with his um, new projects and shit. And then once that shit was done, all them pictures disappeared. <laughs> it started over again. I was like, Hey man, I was trying to get this picture for the uh, podcast because I usually put a person's <laughs> picture and shit. And I went back and all the shit was gone or whatever. And I was like, "You, you people in your art." <laughs> it's I don't know. I can't speak for him, but for me, it's like a it's a purge because it's like when I put something out, I'm like, okay, 
mm-hmm. that part of my life is over. Mm-hmm. It is not over because people are still experiencing it, even maybe like 20 years from now, they're still experiencing it. But for me, that part of my life is done. <laughs> so like, it doesn't need to stay in my phone. <laughs> word, word. Yeah. I can't speak for him though, but that's like, that's my thought press, process behind like deleting yeah, everything. It, it's, it's similar. It's just like, because it's, just it, like it's gone now. It's, yeah, it's, it's similar because <laughs> um, I talk to him often about that or whatever. And he's just like, well, I mean, it was for the project. The project is done, so I'm moving on to the next. It's thing, gone, you know? 100. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'll be interested in uh, a Dende and Sir John Lee collaboration or whatever. We, we'll shoot that off to the side for a later date. But um, you talk about your expressions across social media and whatnot. You also started a, a Twitch channel not too long ago, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So, what has that experience been like to you? Because not only do you play video games, you kind of shop some of your old music and whatnot, play clips from your podcast and whatnot. So, what has Twitch kind of been like for you so far? Twitch is a whole nother community of people. <laughs> like there's people on all my other social media that get on Twitch, mm-hmm. but there's a whole sect of people that are only on Twitch. Yeah. And it's weird. <laughs> like it's those people are cool because they are, like they understand how Twitch works. Yes. Um yeah, I go on there and I, I, I play old music, I play unreleased music, I play games, I'll um I'll go on there and hate watch videos. I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> but hate, wa- hate watching videos is basically me telling people, send me videos you think I'll hate and I'll react to them. And I haven't had someone send me a video that I liked. <laughs> I, I hated them all. Um, it's cool. It's a cool experience, though, because you get to like, like do live. It's, it's kind of a live performance, but it's not a performance. It's just you being yourself. Mm-hmm. And doing the things that you're doing at that moment, but there's a camera on you. Yeah, and it was, it was, a, it was funny because um, we talked about the All Cap podcast, and I remember seeing a clip from it where y'all prank called the the, the bookstore, half price yeah. books or whatever. <laughs> and, um, I, I happened to fall into one of your um, your Twitch streams, and that was one of the ones I requested you play, and you played <laughs> that shit. That shit just hilarious to me. I love. <laughs> I want to, we need to start prank calling people again. That one was really funny just because the fact that lady like was scared, <laughs> like, and, and I felt bad after, but she was just like, oh, we need to pull these books. She was so PC that she was ready to pull all the books. Yeah, and yeah. the thing was, the reason I said Kurt Vonnegut is because all the books in my house, like almost all the books in my house are Kurt Vonnegut books. So that's the first name I thought of. <laughs> like, And she obviously didn't know who that was. But so, she, I mean, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm, I'm always transparent with my guests. I, was like, I don't even know who the fuck that is. So. All right. So Kurt Vonnegut is a guy that makes sci-fi books. Okay. Um, But <clears throat> what I told her was he got caught in blackface, which is not yeah, true yeah. at all. I, I, He's very critical of government. Even in his sci-fi, it's, it's still like there's a story and there's like a, if you pay attention enough, he's critical of certain things mm-hmm. like government and how they do things and racism and stuff like that. Um, so I told her that Kurt Vonnegut got caught doing blackface and she doesn't know who she, who he is. And <laughs> all she heard was blackface. <laughs> yeah. Or that he's been dead for a very long time. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, she heard blackface. She was like, Oh, we're going to take it down. And she was ready to like take the books off the shelves. She not only was she ready to take them off the shelves, she about to burn the damn section down. <laughs> yeah, she was ready. I felt I felt really bad after because I was just like, oh, she's doing her job. But it was really funny just because like people are willing to do anything without any like no questions. validation of 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 yeah. like if I'm really who I am. What I, I told her I was like Steve from corporate. That's literally what yeah. I said. I'm like I'm Steve from corporate. <laughs> That's all I told her, and she was just like, okay. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it. I forgot. It, it was to a point to where I was in a similar situation to where like somebody was like, "Hey, this is such a fr- such from somewhere up here, and we need you to do this." And I was just like, "So we not sending no memos or nothing? You yeah, ain't getting in this? contact with my boss? Why are you talking to me directly? I mean, something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't just be calling up to this." To, to me like you can't be just messaging me and be like hey this is on you now uh, you know it, it makes no sense yeah, it, it's just like uh <clears throat> oh um 
hold on. Let me let me call you back right quick. Then I'm calling my <laughs> boss. I'm like, hey man, this motherfucker on the phone talking about this and that and the third. I'm just, it made no sense to me, but I just want to let you know before I do. Yeah. I feel like that's safe to run it by at least one other person. Mm-hmm. Cause then you'd be like, if I did something wrong, you'd be like, Well, I told him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he said it was cool he said it was straight but old girl was ready to burn the books <laughs> so, like, so like you gotta be safer you know you gotta be safer out here so, uh... <laughs> shawty was ready to burn some books she was about to burn them up i just told her to throw them away she, she was about to burn them yeah <laughs> so uh <clears throat> creatively and whatnot i mean you, you... <laughs> got the me album you got a uh, phone number out and whatnot i mean i seen you do a couple of uh you know i guess a couple of sessions on twitter here not too long ago just trying some different things out and whatnot um is there anything in your mind as far as what the direction is next um Honestly, I'm just going with the flow at this point. I'm not even convinced that the world's going to open up again ever. I think we're stuck inside. Uh, I think they're going to close again as soon as Biden's the president and then we're done forever and we're just inside and we're living in like uh, we're in uh, what's that game? Ready Player Now? Oh, we yeah. have to put on VRs. <laughs> but, I refuse to wear shit on my face. I'm just going to be wearing VRs from now on. But um, honestly, direction wise, I don't know. I'm just trying to make make content and put it out because my downfall has been making content and then holding on to it. Ah. So I'm just going to put out everything. That I, I mean, that I mean, that's kind of cool. Cause I mean, you know, Twitch provided you with that outlet, you know, so yeah, you for sure. Put out old and unreleased stuff like how you were saying and whatnot. So, I mean, as long as you keep that going, I believe that'll keep your mind working and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I, I put out very old stuff on Twitter, like 2015, 2014. Yeah. Know. Cause I remember you, um, you had some, uh, some rap stuff on there. And whatnot, because I mean, you tend to do that from time to time. But he was like, "Yeah, man," it's like you said some verse on there. I forgot what it was. He was like, "Man, y'all ain't feeling that." So <laughs> I ain't catch that. You, you, you didn't hear what I said. I'm gonna play it back for you real quick. It's all nerd stuff, probably. <laughs> all my older raps is are either jokes or they're very nerdy. So I'll be like, at least get it. <laughs> at least get what I was saying. Hold on. Since I'm on Twitch, I pull up this window capture real quick. I pull up the reference on Wikipedia. We'll just play it again. You just Google it. Google what I'm talking about. All right, guys. <laughs> but, like, I mean, you talk about uh, inspiration. I mean, Ready Player One and whatnot. I was like, well, why don't you? You already got a themed show for your podcast, uh, The Dende Hour. Why don't you call it Re- Ready Player Dende, your next project? <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed. <laughs> I'm not opposed, but then I would have to make a V. I'd have to make a VR short film. Ooh, see, we that'd open be, up the possibility, like that'd be, man, because it's not it's not that hard from what I've seen. But then again, I've never tried it, so <laughs> it would just have to make it look like you're there, though. So that might be a little bit harder. I don't know. We'd have to workshop that. <laughs> We'd have to workshop that with people that know how to film stuff, because I don't know how to film anything. I'm not a I just try to stay to know what I, to what I know how to do. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing, though. I mean, from what I've saw, you put out so many good visuals or whatever. I guess that's you know the creative team that's uh, behind you and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I mean, are those your ideas that they bring to life, or that's just something they come with after hearing your content? No, it's uh, pretty much anything that I put out visual wise. I wrote it. Mm-hmm. It's just them filming it and making it look good. Mm-hmm. But angles and a VR type of thing, I don't know anything about that. So it would be it would be them. But um, yeah, my visuals are like, it's just what I wrote. Like the song "Road" was I wrote that, and I was just like, this is the feeling of the song. This is what I want people to take from it, even if they don't understand. This is what I want this to mean, and that's pretty much how it rolls down from my. So what was the joint surrounding the couch? Because I remember that for a long time. So couches to me represent comfortability. Mm-hmm. Couches represent uh, fellowship. Couches represent friendship. Um, at the beginning of the video, I'm on this couch with my friends mm-hmm. and we're hanging out and they're all very happy, but I'm like stone faced and I'm serious and I'm sitting there. I'm just like, okay. Um, and eventually they just disappear and they're not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And that just, 
and it even goes with the song because eventually I'm just like, I look around, all my friends gone. I I go to all my shows and everybody shows up, but all my friends are gone. I don't have any friends anymore. I felt like I had no friends anymore because I was putting what I wanted to do over talking every day. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and then eventually I burned the couch, yeah. which was the comfortability uh, leaving my life completely. Um, comfortability to me was like procrastinating, putting other things over my dream and my aspirations. Um, that's just really what the couch thing was to me. It was literally comfortability. Cause when I sit on the couch, I'm trying to be comfortable. Yeah. I'm trying to hang out with my friends. I'm trying to watch TV. That's what a couch is. I don't sit on the couch when I want to get something done. <laughs> like <laughs> I've never, I've never, I've never sat on the couch and be like, I'm going to get something done today. <laughs> never in my life. Never in my life. This is true. That's, never, what that, never that's what really that couch was. Like that. <laughs> that's what the couch was for me. It was just like, that's comfortability. That's procrastination. That's friendship. That's fellowship. That's me putting off what I could do today till tomorrow. And right. yeah, that's why that burned up. Shit, man. And I do- <laughs> If we talk about the Instagram shit again, I, I remember because you did it in like the little mosaic format and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, every day I'm looking for another post. Like, all right, I got to see the bigger picture. What is it's like? <laughs> and I'm like, is that a couch? This mother, that couch is on fire. You know, all, <laughs> when the, the whole thing with the couch and then it, just thinking about it and saying it in my head now, I'm always thinking about the Rick James skit. It was like, fuck your fuck couch. Your couch. <laughs> fuck your couch, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you could have bought another couch. <laughs> that wasn't even my couch. That was, um, <laughs> yeah, the, I that asked was, you that. I asked you my, that. <laughs> my, my videographer, uh, J Tech, that was his couch. And he was like, we have to get rid of this couch anyway. And I was like, oh, we're going to burn it. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and we burned it. Uh, I almost caught myself on fire. Yeah. Uh, the flames you see in the video are real flames. Yes. Me sitting on the couch and it's on fire. I'm literally sitting on a couch that's on fire. Um, Cause people have been like, damn, that CGI looks good. And I'm like, like that's no, not CGI. No, no, no. I almost caught myself on fire. <laughs> like, honestly, the further I got away from the couch, the more hot it was. Like when I was standing up wrapping in front of the couch on fire is when I felt myself burning. Like I burned my arm. And like, but it wasn't a bad burn, but I, I burned my arm and I felt it. And I was like, oh shit. But that wasn't even when I was sitting on it. It was when I was in front of it. It was weird. I mean, hey man, that's, a, that's an experience for you. I mean, that's, that's pain in your art. <laughs> I guess I didn't want to feel pain when I was making it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> but it did have a purpose. Like it wasn't just, uh, we're going to burn this couch. It was like, it served a purpose. <laughs> like we did it for a reason. And it might not come off as a reason for everybody, but that's why I did it. I mean, but I don't really care. I don't really care if everybody gets it. Yeah. You know? But I mean, that's even weird in itself or whatever. I mean, you had this idea, somebody was trying to bring it to life and it just so happened that that person had a couch. I mean, what yeah. would happen, you know, if he didn't have a couch, I mean, where would you acquire a couch just to set up? I would have bought one. That was the thing. Like that was the whole, the whole premise of the video was a couch. So I was going to buy one if he didn't have one was the thing. He had one, though. So he was like, and I was like, well, are you willing to burn this couch? <laughs> and, he, and he was like, we can use it. And I was like, well, are you willing to burn, burn the couch? This couch. <laughs> and he was like, I mean, we don't need it. It was in his garage. So I was like, if you I was like, for, like, seriously, this is a real conversation. Like, if you aren't willing to burn the couch, I'll go get one. I'll buy I'll buy a cheap couch. And we can burn it. But he was like, no, I'm, we don't use it. So I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he so ran the couch. Uh, goddamn couch. <laughs> yeah, that's my comfortability going out the window, man. I'm, I, I refuse to be comfortable because comfortable to me means complacent. And it might not mean that to everybody, but to me, comfortable means complacent. I don't like being comfortable. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel lazy. Word. So, I mean, what do you do to kind of combat that or whatever? You just keep moving around or what? Yeah, I've never been diagnosed, but I think I have ADHD. (laughs) If you haven't noticed now, I can't sit still. Oh, nobody. (laughs) Um, I kind of just, I'm always moving. I live life like that. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing something, 
I think I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. So I I know I know the feeling exactly or whatnot. It's just like I got all this shit in here and I come in here and I try to be productive and do some work. And then all of a sudden I'm on clickbait going down a rabbit hole of YouTube and shit. And yeah. then then I look at my clock. I was like, oh shit, it's two hours later. And then I was <laughs> like, fuck, I've been in here two hours. That means I ain't two. That's two hours I ain't been out there with my family. And then yep. I, I got to get up and go to work tomorrow. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on right now? Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a cycle that I try not to lend myself to, to make sure that I don't feel like I'm unproductive though. I just try to do as many things as possible, which is why I have two podcasts yeah. and I make music and I, I go to work and I work out every day and, <laughs> like I just want to make sure I'm doing something at all times. Okay. Well, and back to kind of um, reel back a little bit on what we talked about earlier. Your favorite song, I think, it's from the Me album. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, Run. Yeah. Uh, one of the favorite songs that you've done. Mm-hmm. Now, what's your attachment to that? That was. I don't know if you saw, but you say you follow me. I came out earlier this year as bisexual. And that was the song where I came out before I came out. Mm-hmm. And it was like a, um, it's a very personal song to me because it was the first time I like spoke about not being that way, but how it made me feel Yeah, as a person. Um, and doing that so raw made it my favorite song like originally we, i recorded that song and it was like a studio version of the song yeah mm-hmm. and then um the guitarist halston i called him and i was like hey can you come over and we're gonna record this in a room and i literally put a mic in the middle of the room and he played it he plugged his guitar into an amp and he played it out loud and i sang out loud and i was like this is the emotion i want in the song so like there's a version of the song that's like a studio recording like the rest of the album, mm-hmm. but the the version that's on the album is like a room version of you're going to get the emotion of what I actually feel in this song. Um, it's like a real attachment um, and real emotion that all the, all the songs in the album I feel have emotion, but that one is the most because I didn't even say anything after it came out. I said something way after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> like, because at first I wanted to say something when it came out. I was like, no, because I feel like people are going to think it's not genuine mm-hmm. if I say something right now. Yeah. So I just let it sit. And I was like, people don't know what I'm talking about in this song. They just think it sounds good. Mm-hmm. And I let it sit. And then I actually like talked about what it was. So that's why that song um, means so much to me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kinda- the most personal song I have. Yeah, it's it's kind of like what you were talking about <laughs> on your um, your Twitch. You're just like, you you playing the old stuff. He's like, wait a minute, I don't think y'all caught that. Let me play this again. Real quick. <laughs> like, this is what you heard, but this is what I meant. <laughs> like, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, after the reveal and everything, because I, I I do remember that. But like, I ain't trying to gloss over it or whatever. Because I mean, that's a big step for you know mm-hmm. somebody like you to do something like that. It's mm-hmm. just like I don't look at that type of stuff. I was just like, you're a person, you're a human being. It doesn't 100%. matter what your orientation is. So I, I wouldn't I just, want you to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody see right there. There you go. I like that. So, so it's just like, what was that after you got it out there in the open? And it's just like, it was known now. Has anything been different for you? Not really lost a lot of followers, gained a bunch. Didn't really care. It was that message wasn't for the general public. It was more for the people around me because the message was, um, this is who I am as a person. I've already talked to the people that actually matter to me in my immediate, in my immediate, which is my girl. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, if you don't like this, you don't have to be in my life. Yeah. Fuck your couch. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, fuck your couch if you don't like it you fuck my fuck your couch uh people unfollowed me a lot of people followed me it was it got a lot of attention that i didn't think it was going to get because it was a spur of the moment thing it wasn't a planned thing it was like i literally got drunk one night and was like this fuck is it. the time now i was like now i'm gonna do it or no do it and i did it <laughs> like, oh shit um nothing really changed honestly people still treat me the same it's just like 
You feel a little bit better, right? Yeah, it's a liberating feeling for sure. It's just like, all right, now I don't, I feel like, because it wasn't for other people. It was really just for me to feel like I'm being completely myself. Because when I made me, I was like, this is going to be me being myself 100%. And even though I was being myself 100%, I wasn't because I didn't actually explain. Hiding that little bitty piece. It was still something I was just like, y'all don't know. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to be 100% myself. And it was, it was also a good way to weed out the people I don't really want to listen to my music. Because I feel like a lot of people that listen to my music and they're like, oh, damn, this guy wants to be a superstar. And I don't, you know, I, 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 would, I would like it. It'd be cool. But yeah. I don't want to be a superstar. And... I can lose fans. <laughs> like I can lose if you don't agree with a certain aspect of my lifestyle. Yeah, don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's, I that's why you I cut that shit it. off. Yeah, you cut that shit off at the knees now. You know when I can, I'm here or whatever. So when yeah. I get up here, it's no fucking problem. I can lose you. It's okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like it's. I don't really care. You know, it's. I cut off the. Um, I was protesting. I cut off the racists. Then I did that, and I cut off the homophobes. It was just like, all right, we're cutting off everybody. What's next? <laughs> what are we cutting off next? We got to get them out of here. Word. So, I mean, what I ask every artist that's ever come on this show and whatnot, um, you do music, yeah, you're prone to collaborate with people. If you can have uh, any three people to collaborate with, you know, living or dead, who would it be? Samino, Saba, Andre 3000. Word. And I just recently seen Andre 3000. You seen him lately playing that damn flute and that shit? That fucking flute? Yeah. <laughs> I love Andre. I love Andre so much. I lived in Atlanta for a year, actually, but I loved him before that. Um, Something about him. Because Outcast is great, mm-hmm. and people like to attribute it to Andre, but it was mostly because of Big Boy. But I love Andre. Like Something about him is very eccentric, and that's the type of artist I like. So I like him a lot. Um, Word. I, I almost partly thought the freaking Megazord was going to come up out of the ocean and shit and damn, he playing that flute. <laughs> <laughs> he was good at it too. It was wild. Yeah. He was pretty good at it. I didn't even know what kind of flute that was. Yeah. <laughs> it was like wood. <laughs> flute is this, bro. I don't know. He might have sat on his back porch and carved it himself and shit. I feel like he carved the, the, the flute. <laughs> like, I really do. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you've seen how he look. I mean, it's just like a man that doesn't want for nothing, have all the time in the world. That's what it looks like. like The kind of person that would carve a flute. (laughs) 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 Oh, shit. But yeah, I mean, fuck it. Why not? I want to carve a flute now. Just just (laughs) thinking about it. I was Andre 3000. I would carve a flute. There it is. I mean, that's that's kind of that's the that's the motif we're gonna go out on tonight, you know. <laughs> if if you feel like carving a flute, carve a flute. God damn it! That, that, that's that, if that's what you feel in your soul and in your heart, carve that motherfucking flute. It's, I'm actually gonna try to do it now. Oh no! Not your service. I'm gonna try to do it. All right, I want <clears throat> either Twitch documentation or. Well, now I ain't gonna say Instagram because you're just gonna fuck around and delete it when you finish. <laughs> so if I don't catch it all, I just missed out the whole journey in the process and shit. So <laughs> fuck all that. But anyway, man, it's been a pleasure to sit here and rap with you a little bit, man, and daggone pick your brain and get into the process of all that is you. So before we go, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and what you got going on. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at I am Dende. Twitter at uh, Dende is me. Twitch at Dende is me. Uh, if you don't want to remember those two different names, you can go to www.imdende.com. You can get all my music on my social media. You can get to my Twitch, my music videos, everything like that. My podcasts, all of that good stuff. Um, you know, not really working on anything. Just playing games, hanging out, being cool. Customizing <laughs> penises and shit is all right. Yo, customizing my penis on uh, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> <laughs> Made my dick the big, the biggest dick you can make it. Circumcised yeah, yeah. stuff. I mean, shit, it, it's driving in another car beside him. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It is a real choice that you can choose circumcised or uncircumcised. Oh, I thought you were about to say it's a choice to have a dick driving in another car. <laughs> I, like, I, got, I was like, man, I need to get off this podcast right now and start playing it. <laughs> go play the fucking game. <laughs> but 
as it is for all guests of the Random Rounds with Rob, the door is always open for you to come back to uh, freaking promote your next big thing or just to shoot the shit. For sure. Have fun. Word. Seal of approval. That's the only one I need. <laughs> and that was the highly talented Dindy. I don't know why I'm talking like this. But yeah, I mean, it was great chatting it up with such a young and talented and self-aware young man. And uh, you got to pick his brain a little bit as far as his, you know, how he comes to compose his music and so on and so forth. And just how he always got to stay busy. How he always got to put his some irons in the fire, so to speak, and whatnot. So speaking of irons and fires and whatnot, I, you know, I, I I talked a little bit about it on the last episode, and I want to apologize again for uh, the technical difficulties I had. You know, I, I try not to put out episodes like that, but, you know, even though there was some audio difficulties, I still felt like that episode was a great episode, chatting with Nick and whatnot. So uh, check it out at your leisure, uh, at your own peril. <laughs> but uh, cool. But uh, what I was saying is I got to stop talking that shit now. I was uh, always in the mode of uh, saying once I get this certain thing that I need to do this thing now. And now I got these certain things that I spoke about. And now I got to start doing shit. So I think step one for me is to start small um and to speak about supporting the brands that you enjoy so uh me personally i you know there's a great many few podcasts that i enjoy and there's some that i believe have a tremendous amount of potential and i tout i feel like i tout them enough to for you to know who they are because I'm, I'm not trying to bear the lead I, I did a little uh demo video for myself and I put one of those uh, podcasts that I talk about often in the video. So I'm just making myself accountable right now because I said I did a video here. You hear me. And now I got to, you know, produce. But um, so it's a video kind of highlighting that. And it is also a video highlighting a brand that I enjoy. The incredible brand. Uh, Nick Cannon got a line of headphones and uh, other audio equipment that I thoroughly enjoy that I found by um, just shopping around. I had numerous pairs of Beats headphones and those shits suck ass. I don't care if they got bought by Apple. I don't care how much their freaking stock value is, but Beats suck ass. And I had multiple pair to compare to come up with that analysis with. So it's not just like, oh, maybe, maybe I got one faulty pair or I dogged them out too bad or whatever. No, they're just some shitty and cheap ass headphones. And I can imagine with Apple buying them out that the um, maybe the quality has increased by you know them doing that because Apple tried to make some high-end shit out of recycled materials and all kind of earth-friendly shit. But I don't think the Beats brand can uh, be redeemed in my eyes. So just looking around, I, I received a sponsorship from Studio Headphones. It's a company out of Sweden. They make some good products as well. I would highly recommend those. And um, I just, Radio Shack was closing. We all know that. They was going out of business, and I just haven't been in one in years, and I just happened to stroll into one that was closing where I lived, and I seen these headphones, the incredible headphones. I was like, okay. Nick Cannon. And I needed some over the head earphones for the podcast setup. So I went ahead and took a chance on them. And I liked them. I think those were the incredible ones. And then the, um, I kept those for years, probably about two or three years, wear and tear, trips, and everything. Um, and they finally broke on me. So I looked for another pair. Radio Shack had already been completely liquidated, so I couldn't go back to Radio Shack. Um, they partnered with T-Mobile, so T-Mobile carried the incredible brand. So I went to a T-Mobile store and I bought a p brand new pair of the AX1s, the incredible AX1s, 
and um, there was like 115 bucks at the time. So I got those, been enjoying them ever since. So much so that I bought a second pair, one for podcast and then one to just have like in my room because sometimes I like to be in the presence of my wife but still do my own thing. You know, she, while she's watching TV, I like to sit next to her on the bed and maybe, you know, doodle on my tablet or something and play music. So I put my headphones on and do my thing while she doing her thing. So I bought a second pair. And then the studio in earbuds, the earbuds that I had, I, I, I really enjoyed those earbuds. I lost one when I had to, to get my truck maintenance. So I never really built up nerve to buy another pair of studio headphones, the in earbuds, the earbuds. But, you know, my wife had a, uh, another pair and she's like, you can have mine. I was like, no, they're white. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was just like, I don't want to get them dirty. They're like blatant. They're obvious. It's like you see these big white things inside your ear. And, and I was like, I didn't like the appeal of that. I like the black ones. They were small. They were discreet and everything. So looking at the incredible brand again, they came out with some earbuds. So I got a pair of those and that's what my video is on because the incredible brand is the brand that I'm supporting and that I'm going to be talking about and it's what I'm going to try to do the video on. So this video has already been shot. You know, I'm very amateur at that shit, you know, so it's going to be what it's be. It's going to be a lot of cuts in it because I know I got to I ramble on and I say all kind of shit pretty much like I did this story just now telling you about the video that I may be doing here soon about these headphones. And um, yeah, so look forward to that. Got videos on YouTube. This video for this episode is on YouTube. And uh, just go ahead and you can put eyeballs on it. Or if you're listening, just continue to do what you're doing. I appreciate you for doing so. And um, that's about it. My whole little diatribe. There it is. I didn't... Also, on a, another aside, I've put smart speakers in my house. I think they're pretty fucking cool. So that's another thing that I added to the debauchery that is us. And plus, it was on sale. There's like 20 bucks a speaker. So, I mean, shit, I filled up the fucking house. For one giant, like the Apple HomePod or the uh, the big Google joint or whatever, I, I sp- if you spent two to $300 on one of those, I spent the same amount on the small ones and was able to fill up the whole goddamn house so I can listen to music everywhere in my house. FBI is listening to me everywhere in my house as well, too. So I'm a guy to give them some content to listen to. (laughs) But anyway, enough of them shenanigans. Um, You can find me on Twitter at 3R Show. You can find me on uh, Instagram. Wait, 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 hold on. Usually people, you probably tune out by this point when I start getting into the plugs and whatnot. But b- before I go into my regular spiel, uh, Dende has been gracious enough to uh, let me play uh, the song that we talked about during the recording called Run. So just stick around after I finish running my mouth. You're going to get some bonus content. And on top of the bonus content, there was a little bit of this episode that uh, we recorded talked about uh, cyberpunk before we started recording proper. So I'm going to play that at the end of the end of the music. So you got a lot of bonus content at the end of this episode. But go to randomrob.com. Find all the places you can find me on social media at randomrob.com. Also there at randomrob.com. You can find many different ways to help support the show. Buying merchandise, uh, freaking Patreon, all that crap. All on randomrob.com. And you can check out the sponsor, Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. Etsy.com to where you can get 15% off your order by using promo code RANDOM. Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. Etsy.com. All that information is in the show description. So uh, thank you. And if you want to support this podcast, the freeway. In the way that's highly recommended because we're trying to get that corporate money, baby. We don't want you to spend your hard-earned money. 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 Um, you can like, subscribe, share, retweet all the stuff, you know, pertaining to the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. It would be very much so appreciated. 
and it's all for the free 99. Show your support that way. You don't have to buy headphones or shirts or anything like that. You show your support in your actions, telling a friend, retweeting, all that other good stuff. So that's the free way that you can support this podcast and any other podcast that you listen to. So now, without further ado, just uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this track called Run by Dende. And I'll see you next time. Bonus content. Hello. Oh, all right. Can I change my background? How do you do that? Oh, man. Hey, yo, yo, that's a good question. 
<laughs> I want to make it um something cool. Like uh hold up. How do I add something? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really gonna do this. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, you How you doing, man? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm, I'm hanging in there, homeboy. You, know, you can do whatever you want, man. You can put put that. Man, on Gucci. Gucci. I'm not tripping. It was a joke. It's a, it's a poorly timed joke. <clears throat> All right, man. You done shaved up, man. You got the the smooth lip. <laughs> yeah, it's because I had a mask on and my mustache was like getting in my mouth while I was trying to talk. <laughs> there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot going on. I had to just shave it all off. Very well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, pull up my notes and we can kick it. Yeah. Before we start, that? yeah, go ahead. I like to cuss. Shit, ass, bitch. You can do whatever you want. All right, cool. I just need to know before I start censoring myself. I know you good. You good. I'm not gonna be overtly just ridiculous. I just want to make sure I can say things before I start. You know. Very well, sir. Um, what do you think about the cyberpunk so far? Oh, it's cool. <laughs> the game is crazy already. Um, the graphics are ridiculous. Um, I haven't gotten very far, but just open world is seeming like it's going to be really cool considering it's like GTA in the future with way better graphics and much more stuff to do. But shit, I hadn't, I got it downloaded. I hadn't even cracked it open yet. The only thing that I, I've heard about it is damn, yeah, man, you can customize your dick. I was like, what? Yeah, I made, look, I made my dick the biggest dick there. <laughs> like, I told my girl, I was like, look, as soon as I download this game, I'm going to have the biggest dick on the game. I promise. Very well. <laughs> I promise you. I said, you ain't going to even need no enhancements or whatever. Yeah, you just whip your dick yeah. at people. <laughs> it literally, yeah, that was, that was a throw. That threw me off when it was just like, you can adjust. This, it was crazy. I was like, why is that a setting? <laughs> like, why is that a setting? I don't know. They had that um game that came out a while back, uh Conan Exiles. And it was the same mm-hmm. thing too. You can customize your character with a long dick and all kind of other shit, but whatever. <laughs> That's interesting. Hey man. I mean, it's it's fantasy. This this is what it is for people. I mean, you get ladies on there, they want a long dingling. There you go. Make a long dingling. They want to do that. Imagine themselves with long dingling. There they go. I think they it's, got it. It's gonna start leaning, like lending itself to the uh, virtual reality that we're about to start living in, to where you can customize everything about what who you are as a person. And that's one of the things. Yeah. I think they're testing it out. Well, I, I'm I'm interested in cyberpunk. What is this? Twenty seventy seven. I'm interested in yeah. uh, Cyberpunk 2078 when they mm-hmm. let you customize the labia and all that shit. The, the, yeah, they didn't do all that. It big was ass like, clitoris and shit. Yeah, it was just like you have a vagina or you have a dick, and then if you have a dick, you can customize it. Work. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the only time you customize a vagina is damn when the baby popping out that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I got an intro. I'm a uh, kick it. I'm going to introduce you, and then we'll just ride in. Uh, 